In this podcast episode, historian Gregory Aldrady joins Lex Fridman to explore the complexities of ancient Rome, contrasting its societal structures with the modern world, delving into the everyday lives of Romans, and examining the enduring influence of the Roman Empire on Western civilization. He discusses key historical phases, military tactics, the evolution of Roman law, and the institution of slavery, while also reflecting on the rise and fall of significant figures like Julius Caesar and Augustus, and the broader implications of these events on humanity's future. Aldrate begins his exploration of ancient Rome by contrasting it with the modern world. While technology is a clear differentiator, Aldrate emphasizes more profound structural differences, particularly in childhood mortality rates. In the ancient world, it was common for 30 to 40 percent of children to die before reaching puberty. This stark reality shaped the psychological landscape of ancient societies, influencing their values, behaviors, and social structures. Aldre argues that despite these differences, human nature, characterized by fear, greed, love, and hope, remains constant throughout history. He finds a deep sense of empathy for individuals from antiquity connecting with them through everyday artifacts like tombstones and graffiti. Aldrete highlights that the majority of people in ancient Rome were small family farmers, a demographic often overshadowed by the focus on emperors, philosophers, and warriors in historical narratives. He stresses the importance of remembering the everyday lives of these farmers, as they represented the bulk of the population and played a crucial role in the functioning of Roman society. Their experiences and contributions are essential for a comprehensive understanding of ancient Rome. The discussion shifts to the Roman Empire's significant influence on Western civilization. Aldrete notes that the image of Rome as a powerful empire has persisted through history, with its republican and imperial phases serving as models for later civilizations. The Romans had a unique relationship with their past, where ancestors held considerable power and dictated social behavior. This obsession with ancestry influenced political actions, exemplified by Marcus Junius Brutus, who felt compelled to assassinate Julius Caesar due to his ancestors' legacy. Aldrete outlines the three main phases of Roman history, the monarchy, 753-509 BC, the Republic, 509-27 BC, and the Empire, 27 BC-426 to AD. The monarchy was characterized by kings ruling over a small, undistinguished settlement. The Republic saw Rome expand its territory, first conquering Italy and then the Mediterranean. The transition to empire marked a shift to a system ruled by emperors, beginning with Augustus, who established a new political order. The conversation delves into Rome's expansion, particularly its conflicts with Carthage during the Punic Wars. Aldred explains that the First Punic War was fought over Sicily, while the Second Punic War featured Hannibal, a military genius who sought to cut Rome off from its allies by invading Italy. Hannibal's strategy involved winning battles in Italy to incite rebellion among Rome's allies. His famous crossing of the Alps with elephants surprised the Romans, leading to significant victories against them. The Second Punic War is highlighted as a pivotal moment in Roman history. Aldrete showcases Hannibal's military genius through his tactics, including the double envelopment strategy used at the Battle of Cannae, where he surrounded and decimated a much larger Roman force. The scale of the slaughter at Cannae is compared to other historical battles to illustrate its brutality. Despite Hannibal's victories, Rome's resilience is underscored. The Romans adopted a strategy of avoiding direct confrontation with Hannibal while attacking Carthaginian holdings elsewhere particularly in Spain. Scipio Africanus emerges as a key Roman commander who ultimately defeats Hannibal at the Battle of Zama, leading to Carthage's decline. Aldred discusses the evolution of the Roman military, noting that their strength lay not only in their heavy infantry, but also in their ability to integrate conquered peoples into their ranks. This integration allowed Rome to maintain a vast and diverse army, which was crucial for their expansion and dominance. The podcast also touches on the relationship between ancient Greece and Rome. Aldrete explains that while Greek civilization preceded Rome, the Romans were heavily influenced by Greek culture after conquering it. The Romans admired Greek achievements and sought to emulate them, leading to a fusion of cultures that enriched Roman society. 
Aldredi explains the evolution of military tactics in ancient warfare, particularly the roles of heavy infantry and cavalry. Early armies were primarily composed of heavy infantry, such as the Greek hoplites, who wore heavy armor and fought in tight formations. The Romans, particularly during the Republic, initially had lighter infantry but gradually developed a more standardized and effective military structure. The Roman legions became known for their flexibility, incorporating different types of troops, including heavy infantry, light infantry, and cavalry. This mixed approach allowed them to adapt to various battlefield scenarios, making them more effective than their predecessors. Aldredi delves into the specifics of Roman armor, highlighting the Lorica Segmentata, a type of armor made of bands of steel that provided both protection and flexibility. He contrasts this with earlier forms of armor, such as chainmail and bronze cuirasses. The discussion also touches on the development of armor over time, influenced by changes in military tactics. Aldreit shares his personal experience with a project that aimed to reconstruct the elusive linen armor known as the linothorax, used by Greek soldiers, particularly during the time of Alexander the Great. This project involved extensive research into ancient texts and art, as well as practical experimentation with historical materials and techniques. The findings revealed that the linothorax could provide comparable protection to bronze armor while being lighter and cooler, making it advantageous in the Mediterranean climate. Aldrete examines the factors contributing to Alexander the Great's success as a conqueror. He attributes Alexander's achievements to a combination of personal qualities, intelligence, charisma, and ambition, and the military innovations of his father, Philip II. Alexander's ability to integrate various cultures and peoples into his empire is also emphasized, as he sought to blend Greek and Persian cultures rather than impose one over the other. This approach, however, created tensions with his Macedonian troops, who were resistant to sharing power with conquered peoples. Aldrete notes that Alexander's legacy is complex, with interpretations ranging from a visionary leader to a ruthless conqueror. The discussion shifts to the development of Roman law, beginning with the Twelve Tables, which served as the foundation for legal principles in Rome. Aldrete highlights the importance of law codes in maintaining social order and facilitating coexistence within communities. Roman law evolved significantly over time, becoming more complex and encompassing various aspects of daily life, including property rights and family matters. Aldrete shares anecdotes from Roman legal cases that illustrate the intricacies of the law and its application in society. He notes that while Roman law aimed to provide equality among citizens, it was inherently biased in favor of the wealthy and powerful. Aldrete addresses the institution of slavery in ancient Rome emphasizing that it was not based on race, but rather on economic status. Slavery was a pervasive aspect of Roman society, with slaves performing a wide range of roles, from agricultural laborers to skilled professionals. The experience of slavery varied significantly, with some slaves enjoying better conditions and opportunities for manumission than others. Aldrete points out that the sources of slavery included war captives and the sale of individuals due to economic hardship. He also discusses the dehumanizing nature of slavery, as slaves were often viewed as property rather than individuals. Aldrete outlines the factors that led to the fall of the Roman Republic, highlighting the contradictions between Rome's military success and the growing discontent among various social groups. Veterans returning from wars felt neglected, while the aristocracy became increasingly frustrated with the concentration of power among a few elite families. The late Republic was marked by internal strife and civil wars, driven by ambitious leaders who undermined the traditional institutions of the Republic. Aldrete emphasizes that the Republic's collapse was not due to a single event, but rather a culmination of social, political, and economic tensions. The discussion continues with a focus on Julius Caesar, who emerged as a pivotal figure during the decline of the Republic. Aldrete explains how Caesar's rise to power was facilitated by the existing discontent and his ability to appeal to the masses. He became a populist leader, using his military successes and charisma to gain support. However, his ambition ultimately led to his assassination, 
as he attempted to consolidate power in a way that threatened traditional Republican values. Aldretti notes that Caesar's death created a power vacuum, leading to further civil wars and the eventual rise of Augustus, who would establish the Roman Empire. Augustus's rise to power marked a significant transition from the Roman Republic to the Roman Empire. After defeating Mark Antony at the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, Augustus consolidated power and became the first Roman emperor, taking the title Augustus in 27 BC. His reign established a new political system that maintained the appearance of the Republic while effectively functioning as a monarchy. Augustus skillfully manipulated public perception and used propaganda to frame his rule as a restoration of the Republic, despite holding absolute power. His political acumen and ability to navigate the complexities of Roman politics set a precedent for future emperors. Cleopatra, the last active ruler of the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt, played a crucial role during this tumultuous period. A descendant of one of Alexander the Great's generals, she was initially married to her younger brother, but later formed alliances with powerful Roman leaders, including Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. Cleopatra's relationship with Caesar was politically motivated, aimed at securing Egypt's independence amidst Roman expansion. After Caesar's assassination, she aligned with Antony, leading to a passionate but ultimately doomed partnership. Their defeat by Augustus's forces culminated in their suicides, marking the end of both their reigns and the Ptolemaic dynasty. Augustus's political system was characterized by a blend of traditional republican institutions and autocratic rule. The Senate continued to exist, but its power was significantly diminished as Augustus controlled key appointments and decisions. He established a framework that allowed for the election of magistrates while ensuring that the real power remained with him. Augustus's reign is often viewed as a model for subsequent emperors who emulated his strategies for governance and public image. His ability to maintain stability and prosperity during his rule contributed to the long-lasting influence of the Roman Empire. Religion in Rome evolved significantly during the empire, particularly with the rise of Christianity. Initially, Roman religion was polytheistic and focused on rituals and sacrifices to various gods. However, as Christianity gained followers, it began to challenge traditional Roman beliefs, particularly regarding loyalty to the emperor. Early Christians were often persecuted for refusing to worship the emperor as a divine figure. The eventual conversion of Emperor Constantine to Christianity in the early 4th century marked a turning point, leading to the establishment of Christianity as the state religion and fundamentally altering the religious landscape of the empire. The selection of emperors in Rome was often chaotic and lacked a clear system. Initially, emperors were chosen based on heredity, leading to a series of incompetent rulers. However, during the third century crisis, the need for capable leadership became apparent, prompting a shift towards selecting emperors based on merit rather than bloodline. This practice led to a period of stability known as the five good emperors who were chosen for their abilities rather than their lineage. Despite this, the later emperors often struggled with legitimacy and governance, leading to further instability. Marcus Aurelius, known as the Philosopher King, is often celebrated for his Stoic philosophy and leadership during challenging times. His reign is seen as a high point of the Roman Empire, characterized by relative peace and prosperity. However, he faced numerous challenges, including military conflicts and the spread of disease. His writings, particularly meditations, reflect his philosophical approach to leadership and the burdens of power emphasizing the importance of virtue and duty. Taxation in the Roman Empire evolved over time, initially relying on private contractors to collect taxes, which often led to exploitation and resentment among the provinces. As the empire expanded, the system became more structured, with taxes collected in kind rather than cash. However, the economy faced significant challenges, including inflation and debasement of currency, particularly during the third century crisis. The reliance on taxation and the management of resources became critical issues as the empire struggled to maintain stability amidst external pressures and internal strife. The discussion on the fall of the Roman Empire highlights the complex interplay of various factors that contributed to its decline. 
Aldredi emphasizes that the fall was not a singular event, but rather a gradual process influenced by military, economic, and social dynamics. He points out that the Roman Empire faced significant challenges from external pressures, such as invasions by barbarian tribes, which exploited the empire's weakened state. Internally, political instability, economic troubles, and a decline in civic engagement among the populace further exacerbated the situation. Aldredi notes that the empire's vast size made it difficult to manage effectively, leading to logistical challenges and a dilution of central authority. The reliance on mercenaries and the erosion of traditional Roman values also played a role in the empire's inability to respond effectively to these challenges. Ultimately, Aldredi suggests that the fall of the Roman Empire serves as a cautionary tale about the vulnerabilities of even the most powerful civilizations. In discussing decisive battles, Aldredi explains that these are pivotal moments in history that result in significant political or social change. He defines a decisive battle as one that leads to an immediate shift in power dynamics, such as Alexander the Great's victory over Darius III at the Battle of Gogamela, which marked the transition from Persian to Macedonian control over a vast territory. Aldred also notes that some battles may not appear decisive at the time, but have unforeseen long-term consequences, such as battles that halt the expansion of empires or allow new powers to emerge. He emphasizes the importance of technological advancements in warfare, stating that the history of warfare is closely tied to technological change. For instance, the introduction of gunpowder and the evolution of naval warfare during World War II dramatically altered military strategies and outcomes. Aldredi highlights that the civilization or army that adapts to new technologies more quickly often gains the upper hand in conflicts. On the topic of hope, Aldredi expresses optimism about humanity's future, rooted in the innate curiosity of people. He believes that this curiosity drives the desire to learn and understand the world, which is a fundamental aspect of human nature. Aldred argues that the ability to accumulate knowledge and pass it on to future generations is what distinguishes humanity. He reflects on the importance of learning from history, suggesting that by studying past experiences, societies can identify noble actions to emulate and shameful ones to avoid.